Hi, I'm Rob Lederer, and I'm that chem guy that's going to be going over all the senior level chemistry on this set of DVD discs that you purchased. So thanks for doing that, and it's my hope that you're going to be able to use this information, these discs, as a supplement to what your teacher, your professor, uh, your set of resources goes over in this chemistry course. So let's get started right now with chemical energetics. Energy is defined as the capacity to do work or to produce heat. Now, you may have seen this formula, maybe not, but have a look at it. It's kind of a physics type of thing, and energy to begin with is a very physics type of uh, concept to understand, but we're going to turn it into a chemistry one, and a very practical one, not to say that the physics isn't practical. Total amount of energy in a system equals the amount of heat that can be produced or absorbed by that system and the amount of work that can be performed by that system. So, you know, you take a pen and, and you drop it on the floor. Okay, so you heard the sound. So there was energy that was imparted from the pen. And by the way, the amount of energy that the pen possessed is the mass of the pen times the acceleration due to gravity times the height of the pen. The higher I drop it then, the more energy I'm going to impart into the floor. Do you remember that formula from physics back in grade 10 or grade 9 even? Uh, energy or potential energy equals mgh mass times acceleration due to gravity times the height. Remember that? Okay. Now, if you have that pen hitting the floor, it's doing work. But also there's a frictional element to the pen hitting the floor which actually warms the pen and the floor. So that is the amount of heat that's coming off. And the work and the heat together equal the total amount of energy that was available in that system. Now, sometimes you're going to be able to see the, the letter Q for heat abbreviated with H instead. Listen, I do that too, okay? Because heat, I go heat. So I abbreviated H instead of Q, like quaheat or something like that. Now, this little formula here, sets up our laws of thermodynamics that we need to cover. Okay, now, before we get to the heat exchanges that take place in chemistry and talking about chemicals, let's make sure we understand how heat actually flows. First law of thermodynamics. Okay, energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be converted from one form to another. That is not a theory, it's not a hypothesis, it's not something somebody dreamed up, it's a law. It works all the time. There is no immutability about it. The amount of energy that was present at the beginning of the universe is the same amount of energy in the universe that is present today. And it will be years from now as well. The amount of energy in the universe is constant. And that's what this rule is all about. So the thing is, if we take a certain form of energy, like that pen dropping it onto the floor, that wasn't energy that was created or destroyed, it was just converted from one form to another. All the energy in the universe, always the same. Okay, now, the second law of thermodynamics, that one, well, okay, it can be distilled down into a certain essence that is important for us in this chemistry course. Now the real thermodynamic law for the second for the second law is that the entropy of the universe is increasing. Now, we're not going to say that word entropy again. There I said it. Sorry. But we're not going to deal with entropy in this part of the course. If you're taking advanced chemistry, uh, on the advanced disk that I've got, we get into thermodynamics uh, to a great extent and we talk about entropy. But right now, and, oh and by the way, that, that deals with how the universe is actually undergoing constant chaos. That's what entropy means. So the entropy or the chaos of the universe or disorganization of the universe is actually increasing. Very wild concept. But distilling that concept down into one that we can use for chemistry, it's real simple. Energy or heat always flows from where it's warm to where it's cool. No kidding. And that's the second law. Energy just goes from where it's warm to where it's cool. So you've got your first uh, thermodynamic law and your second thermodynamic law. Actually, there's also a third thermodynamic law, which has application in, in other contexts. Uh, talks about the entropy of, uh, of a crystal, a pure crystal. 
uh, at zero kelvins. Remember that? That's absolute zero. Well, its entropy is zero too because it's highly ordered when it's frozen. That's the, that's the third law. And you know what? There's a zeroth law too. It's real. I don't understand why they actually had to put in a zeroth law, but it was sort of like an afterthought. And somebody said, you know what? If the temperature of area one is equal to area two, and area two's temperature equals area three, then area one's temperature equals area three. No kidding. That's the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Go figure. Anyway, hey, let's take some energy conversions, very popular series of energy conversions right now, and and um, describe it in terms of the ultimate source of energy, for us anyway, which is the sun.